Of course, on Tuesdays when you hear that music, you know it's time for My Love So Lifestyle with Mary Shep. Mary, why don't you update everybody on what happened last week and get ready and tell us what this week's all about. Last week, we talked about... Thursday. Sorry. What day did you say? Last? I said Tuesday. I'm trying to start the week over <laughs> and give you more airtime. <laughs> Well, we kind of don't know what day it is, and every time, every week, I seem to be changing your schedule and changing the time. Last week we were free, and this week then I had to change it last minute to one because you know this is fun time for me, and unfortunately, fun time I, have, for us too. I have a day job, and my day job seems to keep interfering. And that, ooh, yeah, speaking of day jobs, that's I'm chiming in right now. All right. Um, well, you are live. There you go. So, yes, it, it's a. Uh, it's been an interesting couple weeks. So last week we were talking about farm and fresh from the farm because I created a group fresh from the farm in Kennedy County, which has exploded. I think our, if we haven't yet, we are close to reaching over 2,000 people in a week in our group, and it's fantastic. It's been so much fun. That's awesome. Um, it really, really has been. It, it's um, it's become one of my favorite groups. It's just a lot of fun. Um, and not gonna lie, I've gotten fresh feta from a cow that was fresh milked. I've gotten radishes, I've gotten farm eggs, I've gotten yogurt, like I've done all this, like I'm the farm lady now, this is fantastic. And yes, I you know, I offer to pay, I wanna pay people and I, you know, I'm not asking for free stuff. It's just kind of like the way it is and it, it's fantastic. So it's it's kind of fun. I love every bit of it. So yeah. and farmers yeah. are super kind people. Holy crap. They I mean I know they want to make money because it's a business, but at the same time, like they genuinely love what they do. They love their, their I think produce, they, they love the animals. Well oh, yeah, they're gonna get up at four in the morning. Gonna, yeah. I mean, I'm up I'm up that early anyway, but not because I'm a farmer. Right. So, um so yeah. Just a second. We have, so keep she's so, yeah, so keep talking because she's going to leave me again. So last week we were talking fresh from the farm. This week we're talking cheese and veggies. Um, why? Because I love cheese and I haven't talked about it enough yet. And veggies because, um, <laughs> you know, we need like seven cameras in the studio just so you guys can see what the hell's going on. Uh, well, I'm trying to have a show and talk by myself because my co-host just ran out of the building. So this is fantastic. It's alarm today. I know. It's, it's so, so, yeah. You know, alarms and bells and whistles. This is the fun of, of live stuff. Um, but cheese and veggies because, A, I just got fresh cheese from somebody who made it from a cow that was, you know, freshly milked, which is fantastic. And anything homemade, uh, it is just, it's just better. It's just all around better. Um, so I, I, I've honestly, personally never made cheese. So a little disclaimer in advance here. Um, I only kind of sort of know what I'm talking about when it comes to cheese and that is that I like cheese. <laughs> I haven't made it, not yet. Um, I will be really? soon. That surprises me. I would think that you of all people would make your own cheese by now. Um, I, I, the only reason I really haven't, to be honest with you, is I would rather make it from raw milk. Um, and last week, as I had mentioned, that in the state of Illinois, there's a lot of rules and excuse me, regulations that go with raw milk. So it's not something that you can just walk down to your corner store or farmer's market and pick up a gallon of raw milk. You, you need to know someone. You need to have, you know, it's it's not that it's impossible to get, but it's not like there's some master list somewhere of, of where you can get it because of the regulations that come behind it. So that's kind of why I haven't made it yet. Um, I know I didn't. So even as a person, just an individual, you have to follow all those regulations and stuff? Not so, well, no. If you had a cow, and I actually, Joan, who just logged in, she, she made butter last week, and I kid you not, I took butter, like milk the cow, Put it in a mason jar, and if you shake it hard enough, and she's got the kind of cows that produce the kind of fatty milk that makes fantastic butter, and I cannot wait to try it. I literally am probably going to stalk her farm until I can get some. If I have to, I will go milk a cow and do it myself. Um, 
But if it's your cow, obviously you can do whatever you want with the product that comes out of it. And a lot of people do. Now, if I own a cow and I milk it and I make cheese and butter and I give it to you because I know you and because you're my dad and my cousin, um, and it's the same the lady that gifted me cheese. She knows someone who has a cow, lets her have some milk, and she makes some cheese. She can't sell it. She can't bring it to the farmer's market because of those regulations. So it's not so much that. It's that it's, you know, a farmer can't just broadcast and say, I have 20 cows and I'm willing to give this milk away or, you know, sell the raw milk. There's that sort of regulations come in. So you can't just go to a farmer's market because you know there's a farmer there who has dairy cows. That, that It's not quite that easy. Um, okay, so it really is more like that you're going to sell it to somebody. Right. Correct. Which that so, still being said, if you but she, you could make butter just by shaking the jar. Yeah. Because I remember being little and going to like a, a butter churn that yeah, you see. Yeah. That's well, all it is. It's that same and, that agitation of yeah. the milk product itself is what turns it into butter. Or I can take my three year old and four year old energy out just by churning. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. I remember. I remember doing that. And Jones, it's invite Jones. See, now you open to Big Fat Mouth because I will literally come to your farm. I am off next week, and I plan on doing a bit of a farm crawl. I know that social distancing and all, but I've got my masks. If you want me to wear them, I've got plenty of hand sanitizer, and I am seriously going to go milk some cows and make some butter, make some cheese. I I am so excited about it. I can't wait. It's not even funny. I the the jar of feta cheese that I got from my friend. She made feta cheese. And then marinated it uh, with like rosemary, thyme, and some tomatoes and an oil. Wow. It's gone. It's <laughs> <laughs> cheese. And it's gone. It, yeah, it's, oh my gosh. There, someone made a comment in our group the other day about the cost. Um, and this is, you know, why people don't buy from farms because of the cost. And I get it. There's a lot of people who are really hurting for food and money right now. But once you've had farm fresh anything, once you've had good coffee, once you've had good cheese, good wine, once you've had something of quality, so it's not that farmers charge high prices because they feel like being expensive. They charge high prices because the quality of their product demands such. Yeah, a lot goes into it. And right. Like, but I mean, you talk about you get what you pay for. Right. You yeah, really you do. do. You really do. You get a lot more out of a cow or a pig that has been loved its entire life. And I get it. If you're the kind of person who can't see stuff and be put down and you're, you know, a, a vegetarian for those, those, something from a farm, a local farm, they're not necessarily pets, but they're about as close as you're going to get to it. And they're treated as such. They're loved. They're cuddled. They're snubbed. They're, you know, if it gets too cold, they're brought in. They're cared for. They're loved. They're not mass produced and shuffled from one field to the next through, you know, um, what's that lady's name, Temple uh, Brandon or whatever, who's changed, she changed the face of cattle way back when um, and how they were processed and how they were humanely treated. Mm -hmm. I believe that's her name. I could be butchering that. Uh -huh. But that's <laughs> it. But <laughs> Mary's got jokes. <laughs> um, but you, you do. You, that and, one's funnier than the joke. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. You, you it's so it's been a long time coming because I talked about it. I love cheese. The only thing I like probably more than cheese is potatoes. You put potatoes and cheese together and I'm a happy little girl. Oh my perfect. Oh my god, perfect. Fingerling potatoes, rubber potatoes, new potatoes, yellow potatoes, gold potatoes. Yeah. Um I'm I had a chili cheese potatoes the other day. So surprise so, see now why'd you have to go there? Oh, that's her. It's, see, I'm I right can't there. have that oh, because frozen pots that are in all of their produced, mass processed, 16 potatoes shredded to make little pieces and bound back together as a tater tot, they're heavenly goodness, and I can't have them because it's like five of them is half my day's sodium. Yeah, which is so sad. But, you know, I think we've can make your own. You. We've taken you way off on cheese. And you got, you've got a whole thing where oh, yeah, I got all sorts salt of in cheese. So this is this is in, this is intense. It, it well it is. Um. So cheese at its base is a dairy product derived from milk. Um. It forms by the coagulation of the actual proteins or casein or whatever it is in the in the milk bits. Cheese, unfortunately, is one of those products that that kind of needs salt. Um. 
you wonder where it fits in a low sodium world. I've said this before. The reason I cook everything else so low sodium is so that I can put cheese on it. Yeah, you yeah. You know, if, if you make a recipe from yourself, if you make your own sauces, if you make your own stuff, you, you know, you can afford to have those cheese bits and different cheeses, depending on how they're made, are gonna have different salt contents. Um, but cheese, like anything else, salt adds flavor. It enhances flavor. So depending on the flora of the cow, which is the you know, the actual flora of bacterial and stuff that makes the flavor the flavor, same as wines or anything else. Um, uh, what's the other word? Terroir, 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 T E R R I O R. It's like wine, how different wines are dedicated to different regions. Okay. It's the same with cheese. Depending on your cheese maker and where they're aged, where they're kept, where they're whatever, they're going to take on and impart different flavors based on the region that they're from. So, salt enhances all of those great flavors. Huh. So, in theory, like canning, you would think that I could just eliminate the salt and find other ways to enhance flavor, which is partially true, but in cheese making, they actually do the salt for different reasons. It's it's meant to control certain bad bacteria while the good bacteria is grow. Like blue cheese, mm -hmm. you're, it's controlled fermentation to get a mold that you want and not a mold that you don't want. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, salt plays an important role in that. So you can't necessarily eliminate um, salt completely from all cheeses. Some, like a quick farmer's cheese, yeah. essentially if you, if you milk, mix milk and vinegar, you're, you're going to get kind of a cheese. It's just going to taste like milk because it's, it just separates the milk and the whey and the sugars and the proteins and whatever. And that's like a quick farmer's cheese. Hmm. Um, but one but that has to be fresh milk, right? So you can't, you, you can't go to the store and buy yourself a gallon of milk and then put vinegar in it. You can't. Eat. You can't. Really? You can't. Huh. Um, again, I might try that just to. The, so, the, you can use um, pasteurized, um, homogenized, pasteurized, homogenized, whatever. As long as it's not the ultra other or the um, ultra high temperature pasteurized stuff, that, that, the ultra stuff, it, it changes it in such a way that it, it just isn't. Um, it won't form a proper curd to make cheese. But if you just get straight up regular old and pay attention to your milk jugs, it's not as bad as it used to be. But there's actually other, some people have other ingredients in their milk um, to keep the shelf life and stuff like that. So, you know, all, like I've always said, pay attention to your ingredients because even when you think you're just getting butter, you're just getting milk, you're just getting cheese, and you look at the back of the thing and it says something else other than salt or, you know, that, that that usually is an anti-caking, anti-something, anti-whatever additive to prolong the shelf life. But you can get, if it's just straight up, you know, good quality milk, you, you can literally just dump some vinegar. Um, and if you order it, I think I haven't been able to find it in any stores. Uh, it's a rennet uh, to add to cheese, which is part of cheese making. You, you, can, you can make it out of a gallon of milk in the store. So it's not just vinegar and milk. It's you can. Else. With vinegar, you can literally dump it in, and it will separate the milk, the curds, and the whey, and you can smooth off the curds, and essentially you have a form of cheese. Huh. Is it, is it sort of like cottage cheese, then? I think so. Well, to I be honest, cheese. again, I'm like my, my knowledge of cheese is what I have learned. Like cheese making, not cheese eating. Because cheese eating, I can, I'm like P-R-O professional at cheese eating. But making... Um, it's what I've learned in like the last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, I know the basics because I know, you know, milk is whey, which is the liquid, um, mm -hmm. sugars, which is the lactose, which is co what causes most people problems. Protein are the caseins, which actually is what we make cheese with. And then the fat is the yummy bit that makes things flavorful and yummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but you, you can, like, I want to make mozzarella because essentially mozzarella, um, you don't need necessarily like cultures that you do in feta or um, cheddar cheeses and a lot of cheeses that need these cultures to make them. Whereas mozzarella, you essentially can mix that vinegar, some rennet, and you just heat it up and it separates. And then you take that curd 
and you fold it in on itself on, in warm water. And if you've seen any cooking show, like Guy Fieri's Diners, Drive-Ins, and whatever, you, you'll see there's a couple of episodes where his people, the, the restaurant owners are like, yeah, we make lots of mozzarella here on site, and they'll show them where they just squeeze that cheese real quick and make the, all the mozzarella on site. Oh. Huh. So now Joan actually says, I make fresh acid set cheese using milk straight from the cow and either vinegar or lemon yep. juice as the coagulant. It makes a good cooking cheese, mm -hmm. like for stuffed shells, ravioli, etc. Raw milk is around 95 degrees from the cow, so the temperature is perfect. The mm. cheese making, yeah. So hot milk. And yep. then Stephanie says, which cheese has the most salt? Feta? No. Um, it's a hard one because a lot of that has to do with the cheese grinding and done like the the actual artisan that makes the cheese because there's different ways. There's there's dry salting, there's milling, and then there's saturated, which is like a brining, like feta and and some other cheese, and even mozzarella. A lot of time they're sitting in a brine afterwards to maintain the cheese. Um, but like your pecorino romano, your parmesan cheese isn't essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Um. So. Feta can be higher, but it's essentially it it won't let me. Sorry, Pete's just trying to advise. Oh, wow. nice. Um, he's trying to instruct me on things while I'm trying to answer a question. This is production value 101. <laughs> so, but yes, no. Um, feta it can be higher up there. The stuff that my friend made, I can. I have such an unsalted palate. I can tell you right off the bat if something is super salty, mild, or I'm going to pay for it for a month. And what she made is is fairly doable. And a lot of cheese, to be honest, the, the process in making it, it, it's usually like 2%. So when you find most cheeses, they're, they're 180 to like 280 milligrams. And then you get the Pecorino Romano's and the, the Parmesan's where the wheel is that salted wheel tends to be a lot higher, more in the five, 600 range. Wow. And they can go up on there. But again, a lot of it depends on the cheese maker themselves. So there's not just a set amount. There is some science that goes into a lot of it, which is why, and it's the same with like canning. When I talk about canning, there's old school canners that you know, they, they swear by generations and generations of a recipe. So if your mom and your grandma and your great grandmother and all the way back 10 generations have been canning, you know, whole beans the same way for 50 years and never died, never gotten sick, never whatever from it. But then the scientific world comes along and says, nope, you have to put, you know, six grains of this in it for it to be safe. There's, mm -hmm. there's always that argument. Um, so there is a scientific method to cheese, but then there's also farmer's knowledge that says I can throw a handful of salt in here and I can throw a splash of vinegar here and I squeeze it in the bag and it makes me cheese. Yeah. So, yes. There's I'd be more inclined to go with the farmer because if they've been doing it, they right. kind of know what they're doing. That's the same way I've always been. I mean, wow. not to discredit, because I love science and I love numbers and I love facts and I love well, you putting know, out proper knowledge. You know, science is, of course, absolutely wonderful and good and necessary. It's just how everything works. But when you get people who want to then create regulations, mm -hmm. that's where I get kind of, uh, you know, the farmers have been doing this and everybody's been living in Utah this stuff for years and years and years. So, you know, maybe just keep your nose out of it because they've been all fine. Right. Everybody's been fine and dandy, so keep your nose out. <laughs> right. It's the same, like eggs. Yeah. You know, you get this argument with eggs that, they have to be refrigerated, and and that response is correct in certain circumstances. Once you've bleached and washed and whatever, and stripped all the enzymes that actually come out of a chicken when it lays an egg, then yeah. But at the same time, like my grandmother kept them on the counter for weeks and weeks and weeks, and once they're away from the hen and they don't hatch and whatever, you, they they're meant to keep and not spoil. Yeah. You know, the bird doesn't sit on them twenty four hours a day. That's, that's the point of it. So, I mean, there's different things um, that go along with that. But it's the eggs we got when we were little and we go to the farm, or my grandparents, uh, either grandmother would go and get eggs. They would go not to the store to get eggs, but to, right. 
you know, a chicken farm, right? What have you? Like I said before, we but went to King Farm. They, they never hilarious. came out of a refrigerator. They, they just said, Oh, here, take you know, take whatever you want. They were on a rack, yeah, and then take you know, they were they came in flats, yep, and get an egg flat, and then they take it home. They would, they would just put it on the counter, and that was that, yeah. It's um, what's your favorite song for listening to while you're cooking? Um, so Alex asked what my favorite song is to listen to while I was cooking, and Thank you. Yeah. Oh, little Muppet sat on the topic. Oh, Peanut gallery, turn on your phone. So, honestly, my favorite music lately, I've actually for quite some time, I listen to the piano guys. Um, I love the piano guys. They're fantastic and hilarious at the same time. Their YouTube channel is awesome. But a lot, it's mostly classical music. Or my husband has, you know, 2,000 CDs, so I can listen to any one of his things in his collection, which ranges from Anna DeFranco to Fabulism to Old School, Johnny Cash to, it's, it's very eclectic. So to wrap that into today's topic, is there a particular type of music that goes best with cheese? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, cheesy music. <laughs> Jump number two. I'm on fire. Yeah, you are. I could be a comedian. You'll Comedy Central, here. where are you at? Yeah. Call me up. I'm fine. Yeah. Very <laughs> shut up. Your comedian will be here all of the <laughs> next 40 minutes <laughs> with your waiters and waitresses. She's pretty salty, so be careful. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, you can't you can actually make cheese from a gallon of milk. You can buy a gallon of milk. Is it going to taste the same as something that's you know, fabulously made from a cow that's got high butter fat and raised properly and, and all that good stuff with it. no, it's not gonna quite taste like it's gonna it's still gonna be cheese. But then if again at the same time, I can guarantee you that the vast majority of people are used to um like a brick of cheddar cheese that's processed with a bunch of crap in it, sealed in a vacuum sealed bag from the grocery store. They probably never actually had, a, you know, an actual fresh farm cheese or fresh made cheese or even artisan cheeses that are, you know, the expensive things that you get in a, a shop downtown or, you know, over in Italy or somewhere else. Because even that, the, most of those kinds of cheeses I've only had when I lived in Chicago. So it's 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 shocking the difference in taste. It really is. Whether you love it or hate it, it's the same as raw milk. We said that last week. Either you, either you like raw milk or you don't want to like raw milk. It's everybody's palate is different. Your taste buds are different. I only like the cream on bread. Crab finger slices. What? Crab finger slices. I don't know that that actually qualifies as cheese. Yes, with crab finger slices, but it's cheese. I don't. It's I a cheese on, product. It's I a cheese flavor. We have. We had. Um, we still have it. We have this giant brick. Of craft single slices that that uh, my wife cooked up. Uh, we call it apocalypse cheese. It will just be huge and last forever. So but, uh, it was good. Stephanie asked, "Why does cheddar make you fat when eating, but mild cheddar doesn't?" Um, I don't know. If I I don't have that, Stephanie. So that might be you. You might have to ask some other people if that's that's unique to you or that's a Maybe thing because I've never had that problem. Doctor. <laughs> that might be a valid listening to Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. I can't answer that one because I've not, I've never, never had that issue. Yeah. Thing. So yeah, that's but, different. That's unique. Right. Well, uh, you know, but everybody's again, everybody's different. There's no way to say one way or the other that you know your way or my way is the right way or things taste good or bad because it's all a matter of opinion and everybody's body reacts differently to different things. Yeah. Um, I. So I personally, I like the hard cheeses better. Um, fun fact about hard cheeses is if you are lactose intolerant, you are going to probably be more luck, have more luck eating um, hard cheeses than soft cheeses. Hmm. The um, the trace levels of lactose in aged cheese can be digested, whereas the soft cheeses are higher in lactose. So the process in making a hard cheese actually pulls that those lactose sugars out, which means you you less of it you can digest it better it's the same concept that when we talked about uh, milling your own flour the reason it has less gluten is not because flour has less gluten it's because it's got more of the 
the wheat germ and the oils and everything that's supposed to make it as one whole complete unit. So if the, the gluten is only 2% or the lactose is only 2% and you still have the whole bit, but once you remove that something, it changes those variables and it's the same with cheese. So what are some examples of hard cheeses? Cheddar, Parmesan, um, like literally like a cheese wheel that you yeah. can think of, Asiago's, but then your soft cheeses like mascarpone, cream cheese, cottage cheese, uh, mozzarella, your blue cheeses and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the cheese. <laughs> but I don't I don't know the proper technique to make salmonda, but you know we, huh. we can Google that. I'll let, I'll, I'll let you do that. I'll, I'm, I'm see Google. how many people. I am Google not going to Google. Yeah, you, you can do that on your own. Yeah, I. Uh, you, you well, I hope your antivirus software is current enough. cheese i'm excited to make fresh butter and ice cream from milk i'm like i i i legitimately cannot express how excited i am um for this season and the farms and the farmer markets and all of this stuff um yeah and alex asks is there a proper way to cut the cheese and there absolutely is there's a thing called cheese cutter again you can google that and it legitimately is part of the cheese making kit if you want to know how to cut the cheese then that's cheese cutter yeah and it's part of the cheese making process if you want to make sure that the cheese breaks easy so you know when to properly cut it. There you go. No jokes for Alex. No. I mean, that, that's all factual information. It is. It really on, actually on, truly on is. On cutting the cheese. It really truly is. But yeah, so the fun part is I want to explore the things that I haven't had. So everybody's had cow cheese and goat cheese. But I don't think very many people have had sheep or buffalo. Sheep cheese? Mm -hmm. Buffalo cheese. I guess, yeah, that never really would have occurred to me. I, I had I had mozzarella made being... from from buffalo milk in the city uh, however many years, 15 some, 20 years ago maybe now. Yeah. Um, and it was fabulous. It didn't, it, it wasn't completely different, but it was different. And the same as a wine. You drink a red wine, if you like red wine, then you might have they all taste like red wine, but they're different to the to the regions. And that was the same with the the, the well, mozzarella made from buffalo milk. Um, it tasted different. You just look at some stuff. Yeah, buffalo mozzarella. Yeah, mozzarella and buffalo milk. But you like the mozzarella cheeses because of the way they're made. You can reduce how much salt is in them. So there are certain cheeses like mascarpone. The way in which it's made. And the point in which it's salted means that you can, that's why I cook so often with mascarpone because in perspective, a serving of mascarpone is like five milligrams of sodium. A serving of cheddar cheese is like 180 to 280 milligrams of sodium. Wow. So that's the difference. Or like if you compare mascarpone to a, um, a cream cheese, like our American cream cheese, uh -huh. which they're essentially the same parts, just different sides of the pond. And American cream cheese is more heavily salted, and it's it's on average about 90 milligrams per serving versus that five. So if I'm going to make a cheesecake, that's why I made that where last time it was one part cream cheese and the rest was mascarpone because it reduces that sodium level for people like me. Hmm. Okay. So you can get cheeses that are a lot. So the same with Swiss cheese. Swiss is another cheese that the way it's made, it it just inherently is lower. So. It's not that you can't have cheese, you just have to pick which one you want um, or account for it if you're on a low sodium diet. Hmm. So it can be altered. It just, sadly, it's one of those things where, at least in some small part, salt has to play a role in the cheese making. Huh. So. so now is Swiss also considered a hard cheese or is no. that no at the top? Correct. Okay. Yeah, she is. I, I don't know how to explain that one, but yes, it is considered soft cheese. What about provolone? Same. Same soft? Yeah, it's soft cheese. So. I like I like provolone. I like provolone. Provolone is one of my favorites. See, provolone is one of those cheeses that was just always a very bland flavor to me. Hmm. So I didn't really get much out of it. I like the strong, stinky cheese. My husband and I are always stinky cheese people. Um, 
so we're, we're focusing. Denise asks, uh, what did she say? Does it taste the same? Um, I'm guessing you're asking if it tastes the same cream cheese versus mascarpone, and no, maybe not. And you have to be careful when buying mascarpone because there's sweetened mascarpone that people use for desserts and for tiramisu and things like that. Um, and then there's regular mascarpone, which is just straight up cheese, but they don't taste the same because because cream cheese is so much more heavily salted, it does have a different flavor component to it. Um, but if you get a good brand of mascarpone, it is really, really good. Hmm. What do we got here, Dawn? You can make a nice alternative to cream cheese by starting with raw milk, full fat yogurt, and just strain until the consistency of cream cheese occurs as desired. Yes, that part I knew. I just haven't, I haven't done it. I, haven't, <laughs> I only have so much time in my life, and it's not enough to cook. If everybody wants to start sending money so that I can just go home and cook all the time and play on farms, okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't argue. I definitely wouldn't turn it away. But in all reality, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I don't think people are going to. Well, in the meantime, I have to continue. Always to start a Patreon page. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Donate so I can do nothing. Yeah. Well, I know you're doing a show. Isn't it? Isn't so it? Donate, isn't so funny? you can do the show. Then you can go out and you can cook all this stuff and come back and talk about it on the show. Right, right. And, and so. There's I don't know if you guys have known, but um, for probably the last couple months now, either before or after the show, I've been making food deliveries. I noticed that. <laughs> I noticed that. So there's certain people that are reaping the benefits of some testing to make some things. Um, so they, they're getting spoiled and they get stuff every once in a while. So I share some of these. But I don't I don't have a big enough kitchen nor the time to make large batches. So uh, however, uh, sort of cheese related, with all of this, even before the the whole farm group thing had happened, um, I had been discussing with quite a few people about doing workshops for cooking low sodium the whole nine yards um, because apparently I'm told that I cook like a normal person and not like they do on TV because other than the fact that I probably have some slightly more exotic things in my fridge just because I, I cook more than most I, I still cook like it and that's why I think everybody loved Julia Child back in the day because if she dropped a whole bird on the floor she'd just pick it up fumble it around wash it off and still I'm like oh that just happened all right we're gonna cook it anyway yeah. she cooked like a real person yeah it wasn't you know 16 bowls of stuff already set out for you and i'm gonna do this in two minutes when she cooked like a real person that's not her entire body of shirt right. that's really true that's really what I'm saying. So you know, i know but I, I, see now I, I they need to play they need to replay all the julia child shows during this pandemic that would be fantastic um but we i was discussing and researching doing workshops for that and then now after creating the farm group there's a few of us that are talking about doing um cheese workshops and food workshops and fresh from the farm workshops so once the, the zombie apocalypse is over and, and the zombies decide to subside we will start having workshops and things of that nature so we can look forward to that in the near future it'll be a lot of fun maybe we could actually do a workshop on your show yeah. Well, you guys will probably definitely be there doing a live broadcast of us, you know, trying to figure out how to do a workshop with me because that I, I'm not, I'm, I am so accident prone in the kitchen. It's hilarious, which will probably make for good TV or video or whatever the heck you want to call it. But well, just so long as uh, you're safe, because yeah, maybe we won't do that in here because we don't. Yeah, no, that. we would. We, we, would. We, we don't have the studio liability then. Yeah, we'll, no, we'll I have it, a couple we'll do it wherever you where you would do it. Let them carry the liability. We'll just point cameras at you and turn on the on air button. Right. And then let it all happen. Yeah, we there's a couple places that I have in mind where you can where there's a kitchen space. Um and there are actually a couple farms that have space that you know they do their own workshops and things of that. They're a little bit bigger farms, but there there's stuff in the area um where you could do that. And that's even like people who have small businesses. Once you reach a certain point, it has to be made in a commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. So if you make cookies and you sell in a farmer's market, but all of a sudden everybody in McKenzie County wants your cookies, now you've reached a certain point where you have to start making it in a commercial kitchen and get certain health permits and so on and so forth. So um, it, it, does, uh, it does change things. 
Yeah. And yes, I would. John says, I think you should demonstrate acid spread, acid set sheet, super fun party trick. I totally agree with you, and I plan on doing that. that that's one of the fun things because those are the simple things that when you do a workshop, that it's it's a fun thing if everybody gets to go home with something. Like that's the best part of doing it. If somebody's going to pay any kind of money, five bucks, fifty bucks, hundred bucks, whatever it is, to go and do this thing, the fun part of it is, you know, I came home with, you know, a bag of Chex Mix or you know whatever it, whatever it is that you made at that party, you get to come home with something. Yeah. You feel like you've accomplished. So even if all you did was milk, mix, mix milk in, in a form of acid like lemon juice and you get a little tiny simple basic form of cheese, it's like, ooh, I made cheese today. I have accomplished. And that's the fun bit of it. So yes, we do plan on doing that. It'll be a lot of fun. I can't cool. wait to see what That'd be cool. Um, and it's always fun to make feet driving things. So maybe we'll have that. I am so tempted to make that part of my show every week. Let's make feet drive something. <laughs> And as long as it's not banana, uh, I'm I'm not, bag I freeze frame that and show that to my husband because he doesn't watch the show live. He listens to it on the station. Um, and was I hear when I go home. Huh? Was that on camera? It, it was. Oh. That was back when we still had both of us oh, in, the, okay. in, the, in the shop. All right. So that was so fun. it was fantastic. It made my day. I'm glad it made your day, but it was. It made my day for two reasons. Yeah. One, because it was hilarious to see the look on your face, like, yeah, no, you lied to me. This does have it taste like banana. I don't care what you said. It tastes like banana. Yeah. Um, and it was also awesome because we got to go try new things. And that's the that's the whole point of all of this, is I love having people experience new things and, and stretch out of their comfort zone and things like making your own bread. It's not as complicated as even making cheese. Like, you, you wouldn't think it's. You think it's this big, huge, hard process. I mean, it sounds, and well, it sounds hard making well, cheese. And also, when you watch like the, you know, the Discovery Channel or Food Network thing where they take you to a cheese making right. factory, it's like it's huge bats yeah, and, and these massive yeah. bats, and these guys are walking back and forth. Yeah. And yeah, it, it looks like it's great. This one, like, right? A lot of cheese. It's, it's a big, and there are, you know, the, the, some of those artisan cheeses that have certain cultures and there's timing and there's temperatures. So there's there's certain things that there are a lot of components, but at the very basic level, it's the same with bread. You can get some artisan sourdough mm -hmm. breads, but you gotta nurture the sourdough. I mean, there's there's places that have sourdough starter that have been in their family for generations. It's the same with balsamic vinegars. Overseas, to have the mother of your balsamic, it is like there's families that when you have a new baby, they get their own mother for wow. balsamic. So you get your own cask that gets some of the mother, and it creates your 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 starter for your balsamic, and your name and your date on it, and it goes with you through the generations. And there's literally families it's like on a friendship. It it really is, and it's wow. so if you. Like with restaurants, when you see these old pizza places that have pizza ovens that are decades and decades old, that are seasoned, mm -hmm. they also, a lot of them have this starter for their bread, and that yeast has been growing for generations. So when their place burns down, they literally lose their pizza dough. Like, they can start over and you can make another dough. But it's the same as a vineyard. If their vineyard burns down, you gotta start over. It's, you, not it's not gonna be the same wine. So it's it's really that's the part that fascinates me is is the at the simplest level yeah you mix an acid with some milk and it's going to separate the water and the, the curds or the whey and the curds and you're going to have cheese but it's the the artisan level that comes into it to make it something that people covet that's fantastic to me huh. so the games you'd use any old big oh, like you probably wouldn't use like malt vinegar or something like that would you use if it's a vinegar or an acid like Lemon, like juice, lemon juice, you can well. literally just, <laughs> yep, that's why when you're making sauces, they say be careful, because if you want a lemon sauce, and if it has a cream in it, and you add it in the wrong way, it will curdle or split your sauce. Mm, okay. The same concept. If you add an acid or a vinegar to a dish, and it's got cream in it, you're going to split that way in that curd, and you're going to essentially have just added, you know, cottage cheese to your dish, which. Well, I mean, I like cottage cheese. I like cottage cheese a lot. So do I. It's another salted. It's, I, I get like large eat. curd. Large curd cottage. Have you ever, ever mixed that with tuna? I have. That's cool. I, like I that. put it in my lasagna too. In, in lasagna? 
I use both, but I, I prefer cottage cheese. I like the creaminess of it. Oh, I'm not a huge ricotta fan. I mean, if it's really good, high quality ricotta, I like it, but I, I'm not. I like it with pizzas as well. In fact, that's about the only time I'll ever eat one. If, if, if those crackers are cheap. That's funny. So, the other part of this show is veggies. Um, we had our McHenry County Recipe Show every week. We do a competition now. For bragging rights, there's no prize, there's no nothing. It's just fun to get people to try different things. So this week we did veggies, and of course Joan, you know she's got. <laughs> I'm the one everybody knows for food and cooking, and every single week Joan shows me up. She literally made tarts with <laughs> with asparagus and tomatoes and, and dandelions and a pastry, and it looked absolutely fantastic, like something you would hang on a wall. So it, <laughs> everything about it was hilarious because it was wow. awesome, and she totally showed me up. Which is funny when you get shown up in your food group by somebody else. Uh, that's kind of cool, though. It really is. It's it's fun to see the foodie brought out in everybody. It's it's fantastic for me. It's so much fun to see what people make, and so many people send me messages like, "Oh, mine doesn't look as pretty as yours. Mine didn't always look that pretty either. You got to start somewhere. You just the whole point is to have fun with it, and make whatever you want." And people, you know, everybody thinks vegetables like a can of corn. Not everybody, but a lot of people. You don't think to expand and try. I mean, for years, until I got really good into cooking, I just always assumed that asparagus was squishy. And it is not squishy. No, it takes a lot of cooking to get it. Right, which is when you buy it out of a can, which is what I had as a child when my mom would buy asparagus, pretty much because I'm sure she just thought that we should try vegetables and it was different, so she bought asparagus in a can. <laughs> But it was so mushy. I mean, it's like baby food. I don't even know how it maintained its shape coming out of the can because it, it was so squishy. Until I <laughs> until I had farm fresh asparagus well over you know decades ago. And it was so unbelievably good that I was like, holy crap. All my life I didn't like asparagus because I thought it was squishy, gross crappy, mild flavored, bitter, whatever. And yeah, I could see that because that's kind of how I first had it. But And then I'm like, okay, done with that. And But then my wife actually introduced me to uh, asparagus that she put like it's like it's like I didn't even know it was long. Right. And but she like put it in the oven and wrapped it in bacon and roasted it. Of course, you can bacon, bacon on almost oh, anything yeah. and I'll eat it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's Bacon wrapped asparagus, which is pretty bad. It really is. And again, I've mentioned this before where you can't afford to have bacon because of low sodium issues. You can still have the bacon fat. So the, the salt is typically in the meat product itself hmm. when it comes to stuff like that that's brined or salt cured. So the fat itself doesn't render much of that salt out with it. It's just purely the fat protein or the fat from the, the animal itself, which is why I tend to eat pork a lot because of the the flavor that comes from pork naturally. Yeah. It's so good and super strong. So you can get pork fat from the butcher. Yeah. And just straight up use pork fat to season your dish. So if you take, you know, a couple chunks of pork fat and saute some asparagus or vegetables in it. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, it's freaking fun. We actually had, for Mother's Day, we right. had uh, a roast pork shoulder with uh, carrots and potatoes that uh, my wife, she actually made it because she wanted it to taste good. I volunteered to make it, but she made it. But it was really good. Yeah, I, I like beef, but I, I don't like the flavor from pork fat better. So anytime I'm making or using a fat to enhance another dish, it, it is it's usually almost predominantly pork. Hmm. Um, so now I admittedly I'm this one's hard for me because I I I like meat. I like steak, I like pork, I like fish, I like I like animal proteins. But you really should try going full blown vegetable, vegetarian, whatever you want to call it, at least a couple nights a week. Um, 
animal proteins are harder for your, your body to digest. It, it's just fact. It's even if you're someone who's genetically from a bloodline that has been raised on meat all your life, and we've talked about that before too, that if you're, you know, if you were raised in Okinawa, Japan, living off fish and soy products all your life, and now suddenly you're trying to eat, you know, beef and dairy products, it's going to make you sick. You're, you're just, your body, your genetics, your conditioning, your, everything about you is made for certain things. Um, but it, it's still a harder protein to digest. So it's a good idea to at least try a few times a week to go full-blown vegetarian. There's plenty of vegetables that are high in protein. Um, asparagus, like we were just talking about, sweet potatoes, corn, spinach, peas, uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, zucchini, um, beet greens, avocado, and mushrooms. And one that people don't think of is high in protein as mushrooms. Yeah, I would not have. I like mushrooms. I like mushrooms a lot. But I never would have thought of them as being high in and I, I don't even think of mushrooms as a vegetable, frankly. I just they're really a fungus, but I, when I mean vegetables, the same with tomatoes. Tomatoes technically, I think, are a fruit. Mm. But yeah, I guess they are. It, it, because I don't like a tomato on a sandwich. I really do. No, mayo, tom mayo tomato, mayo, mayo, tomato sandwiches, mayonnaise. Oh, <laughs> it's amazing that I'm speaking a little bit better than you oh. this late in the day. <laughs> this late in the day, my brain starts shutting off. I I and, have uh, I have been so tired lately. Yeah. I have been working a lot. I'm doing You're good. Doing... Like everybody's like, are you okay? I'm doing. I'm actually doing really good. But holy crap, is it exhausting to you deal with the crazy? That's what stinks is everybody else is like, oh my god, I'm so bored and I don't have anything to do and it sucks and I want to go back to work. I'm like, dude, when you guys all come back, I want to take a month off. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I literally am taking a few days off. You deserve it. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I think next week I'm wow. off. Uh, wow. to, to just be off. Not, I'm, I'm just sad. Normally, if I do actually go anywhere to, to go down to Florida to visit my dad, which obviously I'm not going to go fly anywhere right now. Yeah. So I'm taking the week off just to go farm crawl and go play with some animals, maybe get some pig therapy, milk a cow, make some cheese, you know, which is my happy place, which some people look at me like I'm nuts. Like, you, you want to go play with pigs and milk a cow, and that's your happy place. Hell yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, I'm making cheese. Go do what makes you happy. It really yeah, is. Some freaking fun. But, so yeah, when I talk vegetables, it's, it's anything that's not a meat product. <laughs> kind of falls into the vegetable category. But the big thing that people don't think of is use the greens. Like, and I'm not talking lettuce and, you know, greens and, and collard greens. I mean, the greens of carrots, the radish greens, the celery leaves, the beet greens. Beet greens are fantastic. And in a farmer's market, what those are. Beet greens? when you get a beet in a farmer's market, or radish. Oh, the, or like the carrot. top of a, the like whole the top of an top actual of beef. That. Okay, and all right, all right, all right. They're uh, fantastic. Uh, they are so good. Sauteed beet greens with roasted beets is absolutely amazing. Golden beets, oh my god, they're so good. Golden. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's just a different. Like, like they're not red. Right. It's from a time past. Huh. Yep. <laughs> well, cat's got to. Old, old fashioned beets. Gotcha. Um. No. 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 But eat the great like carrot top, the, the little carrot prong right. things on top. Yeah. There's so, and celery. If I could just buy the celery leaves, I don't like this. I have horrible teeth. I don't want to eat something that feels like cloth. It is not a pleasant sensation for me. Hmm. It's just not. See, I like peanut butter on celery. I do too, but eat, I peel my celery to get rid of the outside ribs of the celery so I don't have the floss part on it. It's just the celery chunk. Wow, that must take you forever. No, you can use a potato peeler, it's not that hard. Yeah. But the celery leaves themselves are super flavorful. So I will always pluck the last little bit inside of a celery thing that you buy at the store because the only way to ever get celery with the leaves on it is to buy it from a farmer. Hmm. I cannot find it ever anywhere with it because they hack the top off. Yeah. And it's the best part. Huh. It makes great salad. It's great in tuna salad. If you're a tuna salad kind of person. I like tuna salad. But everybody throws it away. 
uh, and we've been talking about this quite a bit lately, dandelions. Yes, yeah, you bring that up frequently. The entire plant is edible. It just seems so gross. It's, well, I've you don't like vegetables to begin with, but it's, no, it's no. like, uh, they're like, they're I did eat corn the other day. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Yeah. I gotta feed the corn. That counts, right? Um I have my whole bowl. I I eat I eat a lot of vegetables. A lot more than what I ever did. But now that I I get I now that I've found all of the different wonderful access points of getting fresh vegetables, um, it makes a huge difference in things that people don't think of, like roasting radishes. It brings out a sweetness. So, like roasted radishes, garlic, and grapes. Oh, is grapes? Grapes, yeah. It adds like this tart sweetness um, to a dish. So, a lot of times I will throw in uh, grapes with my roasted vegetables, zucchini, garlic, beets, everything like that, and just throw a handful of grapes in there and roast it again. Huh. It's absolutely fantastic. Throw some goat cheese on top, and it's so good. So good. Goat cheese just sounds so good. It's really good. Do you like feta? Yeah. Same thing. Really? Yeah. The Salty, stinky cheese. Same exact thing. Tastes By the not way, exact. You, I know we're on vegetables, but you totally glossed over sheep cheese. I haven't had it. Oh. And I, I, I'm I, looking forward to trying it. And that's why I say, you know, I'm, I'm so excited to know all of these farms. Because now that I've known them, I'm slowly discovering places to get it and make it. And the second, and trust me, I, I now know enough farmers that I will get my hands on some, some sheep milk. And, oh. and make some sheep cheese. So the, a female sheep is called a ewe. Yeah. Ewe. Like ewe, <laughs> ewe cheese. Ewe cheese. Everybody's got jokes in the studio this morning. What is this? this is like, this is worse than dad jokes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> ewe, ewe cheese. Ewe cheese. Oh, look, my low soul lifestyle ewe cheese. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We can brand that. You should. But I, I challenge people to go out. And as long as you haven't sprayed any chemicals on your lawn to make the grass look better, dandelions are fantastic. You can make dandelion syrup. Um, the flowers aren't nearly as bitter as the leaves are. The leaves are more like an arugula, so it's more bitter and, and a very strong flavor, which is why that you pay so much money in dandelion greens when you buy lettuce. But the whole freaking plant is edible. And everybody's constantly all over the place. Get rid of them. It's the first thing the bees go to when they come every season and yeah. the whole plant is edible you can make dandelion wine you can make syrup you can make all these things out of it i had dandelion wine once upon a time and it tasted like the poop yard <laughs> well great. my husband's favorite scotch uh one of them is ardbeg ardbeg and it's a peat moss type it's a moss type scotch and it literally tastes like someone slammed a shot of rubbing alcohol and then chewed on a lawn. It's, <laughs> I wouldn't even, like he, he'd had to brush his teeth and sleep on it for a night before <laughs> I would kiss him after drinking our bed. So wow. he, he doesn't get that very often anymore. I, I try to, let, he, he sticks to the single malt Spalin scotches because I can't stand the yard bag. It's just, it's so bad. It's so bad. It sounds like you're saying yard bag. Yeah, yard bag, A-R-D-B-E. Hard bag. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I'm, I used to love scotch and was a big scotch drinker, um, but I could never do the hard bag. I I stuck with family scotches. That's what I like. Huh. That's too funny. But so something about vegetables, the they're good for you. They are good for you. That's that's not we're not denying that. But no. there's a a couple things that people tend to have sensitivities to. And either A, it's flat out an allergy, you're allergic to garlic, you're allergic to corn, you're allergic to something, um, or it's a straight up allergy, like a pollen allergy, or just histamines in general. Hmm. So I'm sensitive to nightshades. And a lot of people have argued that nightshades cause problems and they're inflammatory, which is not true. It, there's They've done study after study after study that nightshades themselves aren't uh, inflammatory. Um, many of them have proven to be anti-inflammatory. The problem is if you are nightshade sensitive, then it becomes an inflammatory, not because of the, the product itself, because, you know, if you're, a, pollen might not be an inflammatory thing, but if you're allergic to it, suddenly it becomes an inflammatory thing because of an immune response. 
Mm, okay. So I have to be mindful of how many nightshades I eat because then it starts to cause problems for me. Well, you got a nice list here of nightshades. I didn't even know any of these, right? Well, only because you told me one of these before that I, I remember. The tomatoes and tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you went to that. Yeah, before. tomatoes, tomatillos, potatoes, eggplant, um, just about most peppers, bell peppers, jalapeno peppers, chili peppers, um, a lot of red spices like uh, cayenne and chili powder, um, paprika, pimentos, um, tobacco, goji berries. What's a goji berry? It's the Japanese it's, or something? Well, I don't think it, it might be, but it, it's. I've never really cared for them. It's kind of like the oxide in berry. You don't really necessarily eat them, but you see them juiced all the time. Hmm. It's supposed to be another one of those supposed superfoods. Huh. Like spinach. Spinach is good for you, but I don't think anything's a freaking superfood. So we huh. just need to eat good things. <laughs> and it's good. not, you know, it's eat real food and then it all in itself collectively becomes a superfood. Because if you tell people something's a superfood and then they overdose on spinach. And their vitamin A and vitamin K go through the roof because they're living on spinach because we told them it was a superfood, which is stupid to me. Mm. But um, so if you're nightshade sensitive, and that's where a lot of people don't think, you know, if you don't, if you track your food, just about everybody has a sensitivity to something yeah. across the board, whether you're lactose intolerant or pollen or mold or nightshade or, you know, like I said, maybe you were. Your bloodline is actually Asian, and your entire family history was raised eating fish, and now you're eating beef. So, and how come my body can't process protein? Hmm. In until you track your food and you fast, and that's what most people that have uh, like leaky gut or Crohn's disease, the first thing their doctor tells them to do is to do an elimination diet. So you eliminate everything except for a handful of things that people that scientifically have been proven. So, you, you know, it's a bland diet. You live on plain potatoes and a piece of chicken for, you know, a week. And then you start adding things in. And that's exactly what I did. I cut everything out and said, obviously something kills my liver. So let's find out what upsets me. And I discovered that uh, too many nightshades and I feel like crap. Hmm. But subsequently with the histamines, because I have allergies, if I eat a lot of tomatoes and allergy season hits, I'm horrible. Really? So during the peak hay fever and, and pollen and allergy seasons, if I cut back on those histamines, you know, the citrus fruits, the, the eggplant, which I don't really care for much anyways, um, tomatoes and peanuts, things that have high histamine, it reduces how much of that is in your blood. Because if you were on any medication whatsoever, then it it makes it easier for your body to absorb those histamines from food. Well, we only have just a few minutes left, and you've got a nice list of histamines. Why don't you share that with us? Yeah, we got uh, things that are high, foods that are high in histamines. And there's more than that, like alcohol and stuff like that are also on this list. But um, peanuts, spinach, tomatoes, bananas, eggplants. Uh, the common one that most people know is strawberries, um, cherries, chili powder, cinnamon, cloves. Pineapple, citrus, and cheeses, hmm. and and legumes or you know beans. Okay. Yeah, baby beans, chickpeas, whatever beans you want to call them. Legumes. Okay. But those, um, if you have an allergy to grass pollen, it might get worse if you have you know celery or melon or tomato. Um, my new favorite coriander, which I hate, cilantro. I really do. I mean, I, I have, it's such a strong flavor, I have to use sparingly, but I discovered I love coriander and it's the seed of the cilantro plant. Oh. So, um, but if you have ragweed allergies, then bananas, watermelon, cantaloupe, um, zucchini, sunflower, cucumber, they might, or even chamomile tea. Oh. So you would never think like, oh, chamomile tea is supposed to calm me and make me feel better. I'm going to have some because today's tough. It's allergy season, and I'm pissed because I was sneezing all day, and then you just make it worse. Wow. So until you track your food and fast, how are you going to know all these things? I guess you don't. Right. So cheese and veggies, and they go great together. You can roast them together. 
Like seriously, try some new vegetables just for the hell of it. If you don't like it, what's the worst? So you're out two dollars for a bunch of vegetables? Well, no, I wouldn't be out because I've got some what I don't have. Your wife, My wife has a guinea pig and a and a rabbit, so they'll eat. Oh, right? yeah. so, See, you have no excuse. You got to travel around the world. I mean, oh, I mean the excuse is you don't like. <laughs> I mean, I don't really need, I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man. I excuse my language, sorry. I don't need an excuse. I just don't like putting those things in my mouth. I, I find them gross. I love them. Uh, and, and it's good that you do. I mean, you know, they're good for you. Now that I know how to cook them, I'm good. I think we're we're done on this um, video, aren't we? We're still so, chatting. Well, right you know, actually, we, we are going to go ahead and sign up. We are still live on the radio. Oh, so yeah. We'll go ahead. We can do what we want, man. We do what we want. We do don't what tell we me want. what to do. Uh, we, we should go ahead and play ourselves out here, do, 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 do. and uh, you oh, can tell everybody how they can find you. Uh, my local lifestyle Facebook page, my local lifestyle .com, my new website that I've been neglecting. Uh, the Facebook group McHenry Recipe Share and Fresh from the Farm McHenry, our new group. So if you know a farm, are a farm, or want to look for a farm, go to Fresh from the Farm group on Facebook. Oh, and to awesome. support the station. Always support the station. 216 Finette. 216 Finette. Download the app. And next week we'll be back at Normal time. Normal time. Normal time. I'm on PTO next week. So we'll be back next week awesome. at 11 a.m. Super cool. All right. That's it, folks. Thank you very much. And I think I am going to make, if I can find where my mouth is. You can click the little red stop. I button. can't find yeah. anything up here. Where's my mouse go? Oh, oh, there it goes. There it goes. Little red button over the top. Over there.